Imagine it's a new day and you've just woken up. You're in your new apartment, which you're only able to afford because of your amazing job at Google. That reminds you, in a few hours, you have to get to work. You've put years of work into getting a computer science degree and working up the skills to get this job, but you've made it and life's finally good. But then you check your email and you see those four words that bring everything crashing down around you. We're letting you go. This was the reality of over 150,000 people who have been laid off over the last four months from both tech giants like Amazon, Netflix, Google, and Twitter, as well as smaller tech startups and firms. So, what's going on? Has the tech bubble finally burst? Is having a tech degree no longer worth as much as it did five years ago? Most importantly, what do these changes mean for you? Let's get right into it. The Statistics we all heard about Elon Musk firing about half of the employees at Twitter as soon as he got hold of the company. Well, it turns out that wasn't a one-time thing. Because pretty much every big tech company you can think of has been going the same. Before we get into the reason behind the companies deciding to reduce their workforces, we have to look at just how many people have been laid off. The biggest layoff was by Alphabet, Google's parent company, which announced on the 21st of January that it was letting go about 12,000 of its employees. That's a huge number and made up about 6% of its workforce. But the other tech giants were not going to be left behind. In November, Meta announced that it would be letting go of about 11,000 people, which made up 13% of the company. Similarly, Microsoft let go about 10,000 people in January, and Amazon has reduced its workforce by about 1,800 people since November. Layoffs happen, but not this rapidly, and with so many big companies carrying them out at the same time, it's led people to ask, what exactly is the reason behind all of this? Well, there's not just one thing, but let's get the most obvious stuff out of the way first. Overhiring. Back when the pandemic was going on, most companies had hired a lot more employees than they needed. It was an amazing time to be in the tech field. Everywhere, you could hear stories of big salaries and lavish perks. As the competition for top talent went on, people were getting their dream jobs. Program managers at Apple were making anywhere between $120,000 to $230,000, while mid-career software engineers at Google were making about $120,000 to just under $200,000 a year. But this level of growth just wasn't sustainable. The average time most of these laid-off employees were at their jobs was about two years. Basically, most of the people hired during the pandemic are being let go. For most companies, the economic reality of today is a lot different than what they thought it was going to be about two years ago. So when the pandemic ended and the demand for online services went down, all of a sudden this many employees simply weren't needed anymore. CEOs have put out statements claiming hiring rates during the pandemic simply did not match up with the loss of demand for online services when the world opened up again. And who can blame them? If we look at the statistics, then their decision makes sense. The stock market value of companies like Netflix and Zoom multiplied by as much as three times from the start of the pandemic to its peak in August 2021. By September 2022, it had fallen by about 80% for all of them. Most of these companies are doing their best to cut back their losses. The two fields that took the brunt of the cuts were the software engineers working for Google and Twitter and HR at Microsoft and Meta. The reduction of the HR department makes sense. If the companies are going to be hiring fewer people, then there's less need for people in human resources posts. But there's another reason behind it, and it might be scarier than you think. Aye. HR is an area where a lot of functions are being automated. Instead of spending money on employees, companies like Amazon have been using AI to not only identify low-performing staff and fire them, but also to help with interviews and do tasks like checking references, carrying out health and safety tests, and verifying identities. Artificial intelligence is coming for people's jobs. And while we're on the topic of AI, let's talk about the other big problem. ChatGPT has changed the landscape. Since November, this new AI chatbot has taken over everyone's lives. Some people have even predicted that by 2025, it will be everyone's primary mode of research. People prefer its concise, human-like answers rather than Google's methods of presenting users with a list of internet pages. Google, obviously, can't let that happen. 
Its CEO, Sundar Pakai, has said that the strategy after making the layoffs will be to direct the brainpower to AI. Most of Google's job cuts have been at Area 120, its in-house incubator for new projects. Most of its experimental projects are being cut out, and all that money is going toward artificial intelligence instead. So in the next few months, Google might be presenting its own answer to chat GPT. It's not the only company doing this though. Right next to its report that the company was laying off 10,000 people, Microsoft also announced that it was going to invest $10 billion into OpenAI, which is the company that created ChatGPT. This means that for every one person laid off by Microsoft, the company is investing about $1 million into AI. But why are we talking about money? After all, it's not like these huge companies need to worry about it, right? Well, don't be so sure. The money issue. We've already talked about how Netflix and Zoom's stock prices have fallen a lot as soon as the pandemic ended, but there's a lot more going on behind the scenes than you might think. The companies are losing more money than they're comfortable with. For example, following a lockdown-related disruption to iPhone production in China, Apple's share price fell by 27%. Similarly, Tesla has been facing issues in China, which is the source of 40% of its sales and has been forced to lower the prices of Model 3 and Model Y. With the world expected to hit a recession, there's just not as much demand for the products anymore. Last year, Tesla reduced its workforce by a hopping 10%, and it's expected to do so again in the first quarter of this year. As for Meta and TikTok, they're facing a similar problem. Most of the revenue for these companies comes from ads. For Meta, ads made up 98% of the total profit in 2022. With the recession creeping up on most of the world, they'll be losing a large part of this. On top of that, with Apple allowing users to opt out of data tracking for advertisers, there's an even bigger blow to their ad revenues. And Twitter. Twitter has it the worst of all. Ever since Elon Musk bought the company, ad revenue has fallen by an absurd 40%. On top of that, the company has made a loss for the past 10 out of 12 years, and it's now $13 billion in debt. Long story short, there isn't just one reason why so many people are being let go. But what does this mean for them? Where will the employees go from here? And just as importantly, has the tech bubble finally burst as it did back in the 2000s? The future. Most of the people who have lost their jobs have not started looking for new employment. We can't say for sure right now, but it may mean that most people are now looking towards the freelance sector to pay their bills rather than big tech. As far as the tech bubble goes, it hasn't crashed as much as come down to earth. These layoffs have been because of a mix of reasons from expanding too fast to the changes in the global economy and even the changing role between humans and AI and the future of technology. Big tech companies cutting down on jobs doesn't the jobs don't exist. After all, the whole world still needs software engineers. For most people, these changes just mean that they'll be working in fields like healthcare and defense instead. Tech isn't going anywhere. What do you think about the recent layoffs by tech giant companies? What will the career paths for future software engineers and computer scientists be? Let us know in the comments below. And if you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for the next video.